The following amazing story was published by a David Campbell on a site known as ViewZone. It was a report regarding an incredible find within Oklahoma, subsequently chased up by David and his wife on location. Although the story gained very little media attention, the details along with the photographs of the event we have found extremely interesting, especially when we took into account our previous research regarding this strange ancient anomaly known as Waffle Rock, a half-buried suspected fragment of a once larger object of possible alien origins, which has remained half-buried, resting where it struck the Earth all those years prior now submerged underwater as the result of a controversial reservoir project which swallowed the stone and the town which had built up around it. David recalled the event with his wife on the site. They had just returned from a weekly 600-mile distribution route to find a somewhat urgent message from a reader in Colbert, Oklahoma. The caller gave some extremely vague instructions on getting to the place. No names and no callback details. Intrigued by the story, they figured the worst that could happen was that they would have a nice Sunday in the mountains. After getting to the vague location given, and after several hours of searching the woods, they eventually came across an extremely peculiar-looking, possibly cyclopean wall. Their initial investigations baffled them. They had never seen ancient stone structured in such a way. They highly suspected that it was of artificial origin due to the small apparent stones tightly interlocking, which made up its structure. It wasn't until they climbed atop that they must have realized the true scale of their discovery. From the other side, the stones appear to be a highly complex arrangement of interlocking different mineral or metallic compounds, often displaying a honeycomb structure, the layers of which a result of highly accurate cast layers stacked together to make interlocking blocks of iron-like stone. He recalled on the site, quote, What I saw there began to seep into my brain like ice water, jumbled about in haphazard fashion, were acres of squared, dressed, and notched stones. It was eerie, standing on those shattered ramparts, with all those tumbled stones like a desecrated cemetery. End quote. Were these strange fragments, possibly once a single and very large object, they clearly share similarities with Waffle Rock, which is located in West Virginia. Are both these anomalous items connected? Were they once part of a very old and now semi-fossilized alien craft? What David has discovered may be another piece of the puzzle regarding the Waffle Rock mystery. Often, cases of strange rocks made up of strange metals are attributed to furnace activity. Yet I hope more investigation into this clearly huge and perplexing site is undertaken. How could this strange object possibly have come to be resting, broken into fragments within an Oklahoma forest? Another strange object made from a similar anomalous mineral metallic-like material is the ancient Baltic Sea anomaly. Are both of these strange artifacts ancient spaceships? More details regarding David and Sue's curious discovery is clearly needed. We will keep you posted. In our last video, we discussed the possibility of there being a secret colony on Mars, a colony made possible by modern technologies, advances in sustainable agriculture, and life-supporting artificial ecosystems. An apparent astronaut silhouette caught during one of the rover's unexplained cleaning events, and the resources such as water found upon the surface making it an ideal candidate for such a mission. With running rivers, oceans, even possibly a thriving ecosystem, did we once call Mars home? If we did indeed once call Mars home, there would be undoubtedly ruins on its surface. Rare, surviving features that would still litter the landscape and over the years, countless possible examples of these have been spotted and although many of these could be dismissed as mere cases of pareidolia, others are just too perfect, too precise in their appearance to simply be dismissed. Possible ancient relics of a lost Martian civilization. Ancient sarcophagi, heads of statues, pyramidal structures discovered to match star constellations in their layout, most notably that of a Pleiades constellation, 
located near the famous face on Mars. An enormous face often argued as having been nothing more than a trickery of light. This regardless of ancient texts, linking the face, the pyramids, and the constellational alignment to the burial requests of a supposed ancient Anunnaki king. Phobos is yet another curious anomaly of Mars, known to be in a continually decaying orbit. There are many features of this satellite which baffle astronomers and researchers alike. For example, when one calculates its orbit, they are shocked to find that this orbiting rock should have crashed into the Martian landscape many, many years ago. What's more, satellite imagery of its surface has captured images of a very mysterious anomaly on a number of occasions. A cuboid monolithic object with no impact crater resting upon its surface. Buzz Aldrin has even mentioned this anomaly, specifically calling it a monolith, also noting that he believed, quote, God put it there. Is Phobos's enigmatic orbit deliberate? A past attempt to draw our attention to it, subsequently discovering this monolith? Could it possibly hold undeniable proof of not only other life in the universe, but the past habitation of Mars itself? It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Habitation on the moon. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something very important to be developed from the moon, I'm not sure what it is right now. And I sure think we should identify what it is for America to make such gross expenditures again for human habitation on the moon. We can help. We can join with. Together, we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by the comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there? Dotted north to south of the Pacific and Indian Ocean is the beautiful subregion of Oceania, known as Polynesia, made up of over 1,000 of the most beautiful and indeed intriguing islands. Some of the most puzzling ruins on Earth can be found here, upon some of the most remote islands of this enormous chain. The most well-known being Rapa Nui, or Easter Island, with its iconic enormous Moai statues, an incredible and extremely remote place, one that was once home to some of the most resilient and luckiest souls on Earth. For to land upon these remote shores, all those years ago, instead of perishing in the deep blue, could be seen as a one-in-a-million chance occurrence. Shipwrecked mariners from all over the world, marooned upon an island littered with enormous, unexplainable ancient statues, once hewn from the solid bedrock and moved across the island using as yet unexplained technologies. And although Eastern Island takes up nearly all of the public spotlight, there is another island, an equally confusing, amazing counterpart. Known as Temahua Tahua, it is located upon the island Nuku Hiva, the largest of the Marquesas Islands within French Polynesia, whose once ancient inhabitants lived within a crater of an ancient volcano upon the island. Temahua Tahua is littered with puzzling statues, possibly as ancient as the Moai, yet they are clearly of a much more peculiar subject. The earliest archaeological evidence of human inhabitation of Temahua Tahua is estimated to be around 2,000 years ago, yet many suspect these statues may be far older. An apparent altar for worship of a reptilian deity. Did the inhabitants of this ancient island once encounter aliens? Who were these statues intended to depict? It is highly intriguing that this extremely peculiar island should be found in a similar location to Easter. And although the Moai do appear to be human, we still do not know who or what was capable of shifting such enormous lumps of rock all those years ago. In fact, even with modern technology, we cannot shift such statues without damaging them. 
Within known human history, Temehua Tahua was the ancestral home of, of Queen Vakehu, the last queen of the Tahui, the ancient people who once lived upon Nukuhiva. She successfully reunited the two halves of a once divided tribe, subsequently becoming their queen. The Marquesas Islands were settled by Polynesians around 200 BC and have cultural links with many other Polynesian peoples across the Pacific. Yet the origins of these alien-esque statues remains a perplexing mystery. Are these really the depictions of ancient aliens? And if not, why go to such effort in creating them? Temehea Tahua is undoubtedly an amazing place, one which deserves far more attention. Has ancient alien technology finally been discovered within Russia? According to several talented UFO enthusiasts, along with a number of scientists, that is exactly what has happened. A team from Princeton University in America and the University of Florence in Italy have discovered a quote, quasi-crystal, so named because of its unorthodox arrangement of atoms, found within a meteorite from a remote region of northeastern Russia. This crystal, long thought impossible to be formed naturally, due to being too energetically unstable and atomically manipulated. When the team discovered that the meteorite contained this mysterious, ancient, intelligently designed material, they merely moved the goalposts, simply stating that it can indeed be formed naturally. Technically, scientists describe quasi-crystals as quasi-periodic, being manually ordered, no longer found on the periodic table. Although they exhibit a pattern that fills all available mass continuously, they lack what scientists and mathematicians term translational symmetry. Simply put, they are not naturally occurring materials. The meteorite in which it was found is believed to be around 4.5 billion years old. Yet alas, when it picked up this perplexing and possibly alien passenger may remain unknown. UFO enthusiasts and scientists alike have previously hypothesized that evidence for alien life would, in all possibility, be found in a form such as this. Pointing out that quasi-crystals, being a novel form of matter, should actually be seen as artifacts of alien artificially created technology. No one has ever been able to explain how quasi-crystals can be formed by natural processes, and no one is ever likely to. It just does not happen. Their forbidden symmetry, making them impossible to be formed naturally. The only other known quasi-crystals, besides those found in the Chukotka meteorites, were only recently synthesized within laboratory conditions by scientists. Being very hard, with low friction characteristics, also a low heat conduction, quasi-crystals are a very useful product, used in a wide range of high-speed technologies, such as the coatings of airplanes and stealth fighters. Two-time Nobel Prize winner Linus Pauling, the idol of the American Chemical Society and one of the most famous scientists in the world, argued till his last days against quasi-periosity in Crystal's mere existence. He didn't even believe we would ever manage to create it. Does this sound like a naturally occurring material to you? How did this complex material end up on and within an ancient meteorite? Did this lump of space debris once collide with an alien craft, somewhere out there in deep space? It seems, regardless of what certain scientific bodies would have you presume, that is indeed the most likely scenario. The Red Planet Although many people assume it to be the closest planet to our own, it is in fact Venus which comes closer to the Earth during its orbit around our star. Mercury is the closest planet not only to Earth, but to every other planet in the solar system at one time or another. Yet these giants barren landscapes incapable of supporting life. This reality is partly why Mars is so often the focus of man's attention in regard to our solar system's planetary bodies. With a partial atmosphere, and thanks to the Mars rovers, proven to possess water, it is a far less violent planet not scorched like Mercury, or filled with toxins like Venus. As such, for many years now, as the human population has exploded and modern technology has made self-sustaining, isolated life-supporting systems a reality, 
the search for suitable places for future colonization of the solar system has become a more and more popular subject of study. One of the most important additional factors for possible candidates for this exploration of space is the planet's distance from the Sun, nicknamed the Goldilocks Zone. Just like porridge being just right, Mars is located within a specific distance from the Sun capable of sustaining life. And although space agencies and other fields of funded institutions staunchly deny the possibility of it once having been inhabited, possibly even by man himself, dismissing such ideas as preposterous, Mars's desolate red oxide landscape is in fact uncannily similar to Earth's possible future appearance if humans were to continue unsustainable activities or a cataclysmic event were to occur. Thus, is it so preposterous to ponder the possibility that the planet we see before us today was in fact transformed into its lifeless form by an event or possibly past insatiable appetites for its resources by an ancient civilization which once called it home? Could the Cambrian explosion, the sudden appearance of advanced life on our planet, be evidence of terraforming? Could there have also been a similar, yet now hidden, mammalian explosion? Indicating our own sudden arrival here on Earth, after it artificially became capable of sustaining us. An orchestrated introduction of a complex food chain by ancient man, who were in reality Martians. We have in the past covered some very strange occurrences on Mars. One in particular suggesting that possible black operations to colonize the Red Planet are already underway. The Mars rovers were given an expected lifespan of just 90 days. This estimation was based upon the notorious dust storms which choke its surface. Yet Spirit lasted an incredible seven years, surviving until 2010, and Opportunity only recently ceased operation. This remarkable longevity, solely a result of what has become known as cleaning events, which for 14 years were repeatedly experienced and documented. Yet what is most curious regarding these events is that they always occurred while the rovers were offline. In July 2007, during the fourth mission extension, severe Martian dust storms blocked sunlight to the rovers and threatened the ability of the craft's survival. However, when the dust storms lifted and the rovers came back online, something had cleaned them of nearly all debris. On May 1, 2009, during its fifth mission extension, Spirit became stuck in the soft soils of Mars. Strangely, it seems, because the rover was not moving, it missed subsequent cleaning events. Did our mysterious helper assume it had died? Join us in our next video, which will be an expose of artifacts, features, ancient testimonies and satellite anomalies, and many other factors which support the conspiracy of secret Martian inhabitation supporting the hypothesis of an ancient Martian civilization that once called our red neighbor home. Evidential arguments we find highly compelling.